Good afternoon and happy Wednesday to you. Hope you are having a great week. It's been an exciting week so far for oh, us yeah. Oh, yeah. and lots of exciting things going on tonight. Tonight, uh, we've got Converge again and uh, we continue to have great, great Just numbers of, of teens coming. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to take Converge into the summer this year. It's our first time we've gone into the summer. Um, we usually just do a school year. We won't be every week in the summer, but we are going to be active in the summer. And we're doing a, a social event this Friday night. We've got mm -hmm. uh, one of our more popular <laughs> social events, Nerf Guns. Um, okay. So we will be shooting at each other and doing whatever <laughs> we do. Uh, I'm getting pizza, and I've got the darts. Oh, so that's my job. You're so. going to hang on. To, I'd hang on to the darts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so, then... Holy yeah. Week is coming up, right. and we have all kinds of opportunities for folks to be involved. Yes. So the important things, we've been doing these Lent daily scriptures and prayers mm -hmm. since February 17th, mm -hmm. and you all have been fabulous. Yes. To, we've, we've used, uh, we will have used almost 40 people, I think, once we're done. And, um, and we didn't use any of the folks that we used at Advent. We try to use tried a to whole use different, different group. Mm -hmm. And uh, you all have responded so well to them by sharing them and liking them and also participating in them. So we're going to keep doing that during Holy Week. We're just going to mm -hmm. flip it, and we're going to make it more complicated on, on some part. Sure. <laughs> but starting Sunday, Palm Sunday evening at 630 in the evening all the way through Easter Sunday, we will have some folks down in the courtyard reading mm -hmm. scripture, sharing a testimony. A couple of nights, there'll be some music. We will live stream that, but you're also welcome to just come in person. We'll set up the cross in the courtyard and be ready to go. Except for Tuesday night. Tuesday, yes. Tuesday night, we're actually going to be at the Cold Pepper. That's right. And Thank you. so we are going to have some of our crowd. Yes there join in and so and i don't we'll, know if you're going to have it at the courtyard for them to see or no we will we'll just live stream it on tuesday okay. but yeah thank you for reminding me of that so we've got all kinds of things happening next week and we uh, still need you to sign up yes for easter sunday for easter sunday let us know what we can expect and if we need to change anything right. we can it gives us an opportunity to be able to do that to help you be a part of everything on Easter. And this Sunday, uh, we have our normal 9 a.m. in person and then 10 a.m. live stream. But then we have the 4 p.m. Vespers as right, well. And right. that will be Palm Sunday themed as mm -hmm. well. And again, you're welcome to come in person. Uh, we've not filled up the room for Vespers, no. but it's been very wonderfully responded to. So uh, join us Sunday afternoon as well. Mm -hmm. And then Bible study with Hans and Dan is going to take a break. So next week, we're going to be uh, pretty in with Holy Week. So there won't be time. And then we're going to take off two additional weeks. So it'll be three weeks before we do our next Bible study. But we're doing that so we can sync up with our sermon right. series that we're going to start on April 18th. Uh, so we're going to start a new sermon series on April 18th that really dovetails nicely with your sermon from Sunday. Kind of these new beginnings and these right. new things right. that God's doing. We're going to be preaching on that and also do Bible study because we believe that while we are excited about the future, mm -hmm. it's different. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have to think differently. So we're going to try to, you know, reveal to you the challenges that we are thinking through during our Bible study and how that applies, not just to the institution called mm -hmm. Call Pepper Baptist Church, but to our own lives. Right. Um, and I think it's going to take some walking together rather than right. just jumping and leaping. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll start that April 19th will be the next Bible study with Hans and Dan. Again, going along with the uh, sermons we're preaching on Sunday, and that'll be just one big piece. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And we might even have some guest people on the stools uh, during that uh, series because we're going to take that series uh, through through June. So uh, that'll be different. All right, get us going. With, well, and we're really going to need a break after we finish up. With that's this right. With the, with the, the, with parable the parables we had, had this week. Monday, we, we, I mean, they've been challenging. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to pick up today in Luke. And in Luke chapter 16, we're going to start off with verse 1, and this is what it says. Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe the master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. 
the manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 450 Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800 The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. So, uh, <laughs> where'd you say you pull these from? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's another one of those parables that Jesus says this. Right. But it makes us think about the kingdom and Jesus a little differently from right. a different perspective than what we normally get. That's right. um, and, and like Monday, we're not sure that we want to equate the master in this story with Jesus yeah. as the master yeah. or Lord as yeah. the master. And that kind of, so we have to kind of look at this perhaps yeah. from a different perspective, perhaps yeah. with a little different history. Yeah, and, I, and you know, if you want to do the scholarship, there, there, scholars are, are fairly divided on on who the master is supposed to represent in this story. Yes, yes, and and in Roman occupied Galilee, they would have known when Jesus was talking right. to the folks, they would have known a lot about the rich landlords, uh, right. and they understood also the law that was supposed to govern those landlords and the way the wealth was handled, the jubilee and right. and how all of those things were supposed to interact and, and let's be real clear here jesus is most popular among peasants yes he is and the yes. gospel of jesus christ has grown the fastest mm -hmm. in our world in the 2000 years of human history since jesus among the poor and the marginalized right. yes um so as we read this parable and we get a little you know confused mm -hmm. know that the peasants heard it as good news yes yes um and, and we need to, and they had a way better understanding right. of what he was saying than right. what we do, and and so they also understood whenever they heard this story in our culture, inflating the price or inflating right. the uh, bill, what is not really an acceptable thing if we know about it. There, right. <laughs> right. there, that was a common practice and yeah. everybody knew about it, which, you know, we talk about our tax collector there, right. our famous tax collector, Zacchaeus. He admits that, you know, yeah. he says, I'm going to make it right. The, the radical story of Zacchaeus, mm -hmm. the one that is the reason we have it, is that he, he brought restitution. Right. That's what they were shocked by, not that a rich guy wanted to, was enamored by a teacher. No, um, no. It was, hold on, this guy then went out and paid and back. Did something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did something. So and restitution so, is, you know, this wonderful idea yes. that the peasants rarely saw. So right. Jesus is giving them language. Around yes, it. yes. And, and so they are looking at this, and they understood, you know, some of these things are 20%, some of these things are 50%. The, yeah. the markup would have been the manager's portion. Right. Not, Not the, yeah, land, yeah, the landlord's yeah, the portion. Owner, yeah. And so... Uh, we don't know exactly how to judge the characters in the story because there's really not one that we would in our culture say was a good character. Right. Maybe right. the peasants that are, right. but yeah. we see they're accepting the information to change their bill yeah. themselves. <laughs> That's right. We don't know. That's that. right. And so they understood defrauding wealthy landlords uh, in Jesus' day created ways to charge interest. I mean, they would mm -hmm. create, it's like some of those sections of the world today right. where you have to grease the wheels to get right. anything done well and you know and th there are merchants in every oh, town yes. who absolutely uh, let you put your car title and your 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 paycheck on the line for for money and the interest right. rate is just absorbent yeah yes. you know so yes. so w what's new is old you know I right mean, you know nothing, nothing new under the sun and then when the master sees what the manager here has done instead of then firing yeah. him and sending, <laughs> sending him out to, to where weeping the, and gnashing of <laughs> teeth. Yeah. He commends him. Yeah, yeah. And so he says, you know, he said, you did a good job. Now, whether he recognizes that right. he has marked off his portion and he is trying to obey 
the law because we don't know whether this is a Gentile master right, or right. a Jewish master yeah. that would have been saying, okay, yeah, there's too much excise tax yeah. on this. And, and the idea of Jubilee and all of that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really hard. This is a parable that uh, we're kind of left scratching our heads on. Right. Um, all right. So where does Jesus want us to side on this? And uh, if you go back, uh, go a little bit further forward in, in verse 12, uh, if you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? So that comes in right behind this. And we're yes. like, well, this guy wasn't trustworthy <laughs> at all. <laughs> unless Jesus is talking about trustworthy of the property of the peasants because they were being exploited, right? Yes. It yes. was their labor mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was their land, their mm -hmm. ancestral land that had right. been given up through debts. So, you know, maybe it's a bigger view of who's the owner. Right. Um, and, um, you know, and we've got to figure that out. Um, but Luke does consistently make connections between debt structures, mm -hmm. uh, which was a huge problem, mm -hmm. the impending judgment and the mm -hmm. idol, the idol of mammon, the, right. the idol of wealth. Right. And again, how, how has anything changed oh my goodness. In, in our day? Um, we still struggle with all of that. Mm -hmm. Debt mm -hmm. drives our economy. And we love to talk about mm -hmm. government debt. Mm -hmm. But consumer debt is yes. what drives our economy. Right. Um, and so many of our lives, and, and you and I, w you know, to, to use uh, the old Baptist preacher, Frank Pollard, uh, used to say, uh, the reason I'm against alcohol is because I never get invited to the parties. I only get invited <laughs> to the problems. Afterwards. Right. And, um, you know, and that's the same thing with debt. We never get invited to, mm -hmm. the, you know, the cruises and all the things we spend money on. Um, we only get to try to put the families back together. And, yeah. um you know, debt drives our economy, and, and not to make a, a little separate announcement, but that's why we do Financial, financial Peace, Peace University, mm -hmm. because debt, we don't want that to drive our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what drove the economy of this day and Jesus' day and, and was dominant in these people's lives. Sure. But they didn't have consumer debt. They had, we got to live debt. That's right. You know, we got to eat right. and, and, right. and, you know, and, and do all that. Well, and they had slavery debt. This is right. how I pay right. That's for right. what it is. I, I have to yeah. enslave myself. So I can myself. be free. Right. Yeah. Um, and Jesus has this wild notion mm -hmm. that he's not just here to bring healing in the spiritual realm. He's just not here to improve the church mm -hmm. of that day in, in a little bit. He's here to bring healing in the physical and the mental health side. He's here to bring justice and economic healing. And in the good Baptist congregation, we'd say when he preaches these, he's meddling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's all in it. Um and in Luke, the joy of the gospel is the joy of God's healing of all the structures of society, all the relationships of society. And, um, and we just need to make sure we, we have that vision. Because if you don't have that kind of vision, when you read these parables, they make right. no sense. Right. Because this parable makes no sense if you don't have a broader <laughs> right. view of the healing that God's trying to bring. Um, and I do think it does matter, and we've talked about this a number of times, where you live. Uh, mm -hmm. When you read mm -hmm. these parables, yes, and most definitely. Um, you know, I, I've shared the story about uh, you know building relationships with the, the Brazilian soccer team that used to come through Virginia, and they would mm -hmm. come and ask me very uh, humble and but sharp questions about policies in the World Bank that right. kept their country so indebted, and the same kind of stories you run into in Africa and, mm -hmm. and other places mm -hmm. of the. Uh, the world that have not prospered economically the way that we have. Um, and so when, when they read this, you know, when they think of the, uh, the landlord that's been charging exorbitant rates. On, they have a name to put. With yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's usually, yeah. it kind of looks like us. Right. Um, right. And so we just need to understand that. Um, and, you know, there's also this sense of, you know, what, what is Jesus telling us to use, use our earthly money to gain friends and for eternity? That, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but he tells us to be more like the world and how we do business. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make a lot of no. sense either. <laughs> but I would say. Um, that doesn't usually preach well. <laughs> it doesn't. I, I, I was doing a conference one time and I made this point and, um, and I was younger. I'll just say that. I was a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was a point that got some rebuttal, and I'll say that too. Um, but I was making the point, why is it that people are out here um, in their careers, mm -hmm. and, and not just out to make money, make an impact on the world. We see mm -hmm. it with young adults all the time. All the time They're saying, man, I'm going to go put 
clean water in this part of the country or this right. part of the world. I'm going to end human trafficking. I mean, big, big ideas. Yes. Um, and they don't see any need to, to do that through the church because mm-hmm. they don't think the church is a place of big ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're also going to give heart and soul. And, and that's right. the point I was making at that conference. Why is it that people outside of the church are giving heart and soul to whatever it is they're doing? Dance, ballet, career, whatever. Versus lip service. Versus lip service when you come into the church and they see pastors who aren't given heart and soul and they mm-hmm. see church members who aren't given heart and soul to the kingdom of God. Why right. should they take us serious? Right. right. And I think that's a little bit here mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. passage is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Jesus saying, hey, uh, let's see a little more heart and soul out of you mm-hmm. uh, doing the kingdom work because it matters. Right. Um, and so, again, Two hard parables this yes. week. We're not sure we got them right, uh, but they're they're fun to uh, to explore and think about. So again, we'd love to hear uh, your comments. So let me get to our two closing questions this week that might generate some conversation. Um, first, how can we be more aware of the economic challenges of the poor? Hmm. Um, and you know, we both have elements of this. Uh, I'm kind of the face of our benevolence here in our church. And so I'm, I'm in these conversations pretty often. And a lot of times, you know, if it was just as easy as me saying, well, stop spending money over here and save your money and spend it on, on rent and clothing and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, food, then that's easy. Right. But when you're talking to people who are trying to carry two jobs and, and still are struggling, um, you know, you, you need to have a little more perspective on right. what the poor are facing. Um, and so how do we become more aware? And, and some of that is proximity. You sure. have to be in conversation. Sure. And then what can we learn from the business practices of the world? Um, I'll tell you some of the best days, best learning days I've had as pastor is when I've been shadowing business leaders mm-hmm. and saying, ah, mm-hmm. that's how y'all approach a challenge. Mm-hmm. That's how y'all stay on mission. Right. That's how you deal with the economic realities um, well even even our global leadership right opportunities that we do every, yeah, yeah. the whole purpose of those is to broaden that idea spectrum that gives us good ideas right. to use right so spend some time thinking on that give us some response and remember we this is the last bible study with hans and dan until april 19th and uh you know since march of last year i think we've taken off oh my uh, goodness two weeks in the summer two mm-hmm. weeks around christmas. christmas so this is our longest break yeah and uh, again, but we're real excited about what's coming next. We're going to sync up sermons and these Bible studies and kind of new beginnings. What does mm-hmm. it look like to think differently, which builds on the sermon from Sunday, and, and both spiritually and personally and, and institutionally mm-hmm. as a church. So we're looking right. forward to that and hope you will join us then. Let's pray together as we close. God, again, thank you for this day. And thank you for inviting us into a kingdom that's not so easy to always understand, but a kingdom where you invite us to risk, where you invite us to do things, to bring full healing to the community and the world around us. Lord, help us to think bigger than we often do. And thank you for Jesus and his words and his stories that challenge us. Lord, we look forward as we walk into Holy Week um, in the ways that we're able to do that. We look forward to being more um, aware of your love and more aware of your sacrifice. Thank you for what you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.